Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Terlebih dahulu saya ingin mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada pelajar dan pensyarah yang bersama-sama kita untuk memperdengarkan pengucapan awam bagi program Virtual Speaker Corner yang telah dijadualkan pada tarikh 25 Mei 2021 iaitu hari Selasa. Saya, Izzah Fatinah binti Ammar Razali selaku moderator anda bagi Virtual Speaker Corner hari ini. Sebelum kita mulakan perkongsian pada hari ini, Elolah saya memperkenalkan ahli panel kita pada hari ini. Ahli panel kita ini merupakan ahli persatuan mahasiswa Fakulti Pertanian Kumat Tani di bawah kelab Bachelor Sains Perniagaan Tani. Namanya ialah Vivian Jonas dan beliau adalah pelajar tahun tiga. Tajuk yang akan dibawa oleh panel kita pada episod kali ini ialah Impact of COVID-19 on Agriculture Sector and Food Supply Chain. Saudari, dipersilakan. Um, thank you Izzah, uh, our moderator for Speaker Corner today. So before I start my sharing today, uh, I would like to introduce myself first. So my name is Vivian Janus and I am a third year student from Bachelor of Science uh, in Every Business. So today I will bring uh, an interesting topic to you and about the impact of COVID-19 to our agriculture sector and also our food chain supply. So uh, this is the topic uh, that I will bring uh, for today. Next. So I will share about the effects of COVID-19 on agriculture sector and supply chain. And also I will also share about the measures on sustaining agriculture sector. So let me begin with uh, the introduction. So COVID-19 pandemic uh, has posed challenges to all economic sectors, especially agriculture. In Malaysia, the Movement Control Order, MCO 1.0, initially caused uh, some panic buying. Uh, as we know, when the government uh, announced that uh, they are going to do uh, MCO uh, last year, uh, I think uh, a lot of people uh, went frenzy and started to do uh, panic buying, uh, they are thinking that, oh, we are not going to be able to go to the market uh, to buy our food supply, which is actually uh, not the scenario at all, as we know. So uh, during this pandemic, uh, the demand for fresh food items at local markets and supermarkets increased uh, as people are staying indoors, cooking at home. But at the same time, the lockdown has been hurting the supply of labor and disrupting uh, supply chain. Uh, as we know, uh, during the pandemic, uh, a lot of sectors uh, is being closed. Uh, also, although agriculture sector is not fully shut down, but uh, it is also affected. So what happened is that uh, there are demand of uh, food uh, and also agriculture products. But uh, because of, you uh, the movement restriction. Uh, our agricultural sector, especially the supply chain, uh, they are not able to uh, maximize their efficiency and meet uh, customers' demand for product. Oops. So uh, this is the components of food supply chain. Uh, we have farm, manufacturing, packaging, distribution, transportation, market, and also lastly, uh, the consumer. So we begin from uh, the first one, which is the farm. Uh, this is where uh, we plant crops and also rear animals uh, for agriculture product purposes. So after it is harvested, uh, it will move to manufacturing where the raw materials uh, will be processed uh, into products that we are going to use. And then after being processed, it will go through the packaging process uh, where uh, the products uh, will be will be packaged into something that is attractive for the customer. And also after that, it will go through uh, distribution and transportation where it link uh, the producer side and also the consumer side. 
it will bring the product to the market and at the market is where we uh, purchase uh, those agriculture products and put put on our table Next. so why is agriculture sector is so important uh agriculture sector is so important because it is one of the biggest contributor to our country uh, gdp so this is a uh, data taken from uh, department of statistic malaysia uh, in 2019 where it shows that from uh, 348.8 billion ringgit or uh, from our gross domestic product 4.2 percent uh, of it came from uh, agriculture sector so it really shows that how big the role of agriculture sector to our country GDP. And agriculture is also important because uh, it is to protect uh, the well-being of farmers, breeders, fishermen and workers who are mostly low income earners. I think uh, the farmers uh, in agriculture sector is very uh, vulnerable. Uh, if the industry is not moving, uh, they are not going uh, to have any income. Uh, agriculture is also important because uh, to ensure adequate food supply, especially when our country is increasingly concerned about our food security. Oops. So when agriculture, sorry, when COVID-19 struck uh, our country, so what is the impact? of the pandemic to our agriculture sector and our supply chain. So the first impact is uh, the food production and distribution have been disrupted. So in a more simple word, uh, the process of delivering food uh, from the farm to our table uh, is disrupted. So these are the four reasons uh, why uh, the supply chain is disrupted. Firstly, it's because of the limited supply uh, of raw materials. Uh, so when uh, there are movement order, movement restriction order, uh, the workers are not able uh, to go to the farm and work normally. So when they are not able to go to the farm, work normally, uh, they are not be able to produce uh, raw agriculture raw materials uh, that is needed to produce uh, the product. Uh, the next reason is also because the shortage in labor and market access, uh, just like I mentioned earlier, uh, they are not able to go to the farm. And then the third reason is because of the hindrance in global supply and export. So during uh, the pandemic, um, a lot of countries actually closed their economy uh, last year in the beginning of the pandemic. So when they closed the economy because of the pandemic, it equals to there are no export or import from the country that we are dependent on the product. So the distribution uh, is affected. And the fourth reason is because the food price reason due to unpredictable market. So because of uh, the limited supply of raw materials and also the shortage in labor, of course, uh, production is also will be low. But at the same time, uh, the demand from consumer is rising. The demand is high, but the supply is limited. So what happened is that uh, the food price uh, will rise. So uh, the distribution is disrupted. So the second impact uh, is about the labor shortage along the value chain. So uh what happened is that uh each components of the supply chain such as the farm uh, manufacturing packaging distribution uh all of these uh, components they need labor to make sure that uh, uh it will work so when they are not able to go to the, to the farm or to the factory to do their work uh, it will cause labor shortage. So our agriculture sector is actually very dependent on foreign workers to a large extent. So the restriction on movement uh, cause labor shortage, and also labor intensive 
agriculture sector are not able to meet customers demand because of uh, their inability to go to work uh, in the farm physically and then the third is impact is about uh, change in consumer purchasing uh, behavior so before COVID-19 happened uh, people prefer to go to the wet market or supermarket physically to purchase uh, their food or their groceries but since uh, uh, COVID-19 is happening and people are staying at home. Uh, there is an increased purchase of staple and ready-to-eat food. Uh, and also online grocery shopping also increase. There is also an increase in home deliveries and also cooking at home. So we can see that the situation before COVID-19 and after COVID-19 is very different. Uh, before this, maybe uh, people uh, prefer to physically go to restaurants to eat or to go to a uh, mall to purchase your groceries but after the pandemic happened i think people lean more towards uh, online shopping because they don't want to expose themselves uh, firstly they wa don't want to expose themselves to the virus and also secondly it is more convenient for them so after all these things that is happening in our agriculture sector during the COVID-19, uh, is there any measures taken by any party to solve this problem? So seeing that the agriculture sector is very important, uh, there are some measures uh, taken by the government to help sustain our agricultural sector. So the first, the first uh, initi in initiatives that uh, they have taken is uh, the support of government through financial aid. So what our government has done is that uh, they provide special measures for SMEs, small medium enterprise, and low income farmers. Uh, they do they lend facilities, fund injections for infrastructure development. They also provided financial assistance to workers on unpaid leave and which subsidy programs uh, as we hear from our Menteri Kewangan. Uh, there are a lot of uh, in, uh, monetary initiatives uh, given pro and also provided by the government for all these we call SMEs and also these uh, big businesses to help them sustain uh, during uh, this hardship during the COVID-19. And government also allocated uh, 1 billion ringgit to our country food security fund. So 100 million is allocated for the development of agro storage and distribution infrastructure. Funds also allocated to area farmers associations, TPK, Pertubuhan uh, Peladang Kecil, that can undertake uh, short-term agricultural projects. So these are some of the monetary incentives given by the government to make sure that uh, our agriculture sector is alive uh, even though uh, we are facing this pandemic right now and then the second initiative taken is that through digital agriculture solution so uh, as i mentioned earlier one of the problem faced is that the labor shortage so instead of uh, depending on manual labor why don't we switch to digital farming so uh, what has been done is that uh, technologies uh, link farmer to buyers and logistic service help minimize the impact of pandemic to supply chain and this technology assists farmers in adopting labor and input saving practices for example using remote sensing tools can help map disturbance in crop production so if we use uh, all of these technologies uh, the farm doesn't have to depend too much on manual labor. So if there are problems in terms of labors, uh, we have these digital technologies to help us do the farm job. And then the third incentive is uh, we empower e-commerce sector. So since a lot of people are switching to uh, buying online, 
So this is the opportunity for us to empower e-commerce sector. So what we can do is that we encourage producers to use digital platform to help them explore new market. For example, they can use social media such as Instagram, WhatsApp, or also online shop, online buying platform such as uh, Shopee or Lazada to help promote their product instead of they have to send their product to the market why don't they use uh, this online platform that we have right now to promote their product and also uh, this has to be exploited by a target group so what i mean by this is that uh, those who are those farmers who grew up in digital era and knows about technology they should be the one uh, to be encouraged to use uh, this type of platform to help them grow their business so when we, we when we use a uh, digital platform more it will reduce our dependency uh, on the middleman so some of the incentive given by the government is that uh, the government uh, allocated uh, 40 million ringgit to help uh, SMEs sell their product on e-commerce platform. Okay, uh, uh, to wrap everything up, uh, the food supply chain disruption highlights the importance of uh, risk management. Uh, therefore, it is very important that we need to be more uh, resilient uh, to our agricultural product and market risk to help our farmers or producers cope with uncertain uncertainties, especially the government. So in long term, our country should invest more in disaster preparedness, especially when our supply food chain is concerned. I think uh, that's all for me. Thank you for listening. I'll pass back to uh, our moderator. Terima kasih kepada Saudara Dewiwin atas perkongsian yang menarik sebentar tadi. Semoga para pendengar dapat memanfaatkan ilmu pengetahuan yang telah disurahkan. Maka berakhirlah slot we choose pick a corner pada hari ini. Semoga berjumpa lagi pada hari Kamis yang akan datang dengan informasi yang padat untuk tatapan semua. Saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih sekali lagi kepada panel dan para pendengar sekalian serta memohon untuk menutup majlis ilmu kita pada hari ini. Assalamualaikum dan selamat malam.